Hey Tarosphere, it's Holly from Cape Cod Creatures, and I am here with a really exciting first impressions. Um, I've always, I've already kind of unboxed the decks um, just so I could make this video short and you didn't have to see me unwrap some stuff. Um, but I am here with a um, Kuniyoshi Cats by Il Menegello. Now, um, if you're unfamiliar, um, Maestro Oswaldo Menegetzi makes decks by hand in Italy, and he's amazing and um, a must-have for every collector is one of his decks in your collection. They're just so magical and the energy that comes off them is just so nice and I don't know, they, they, they just have kind of a, even even his novelty decks have kind of a serious quality about them. Um, the, me the messages that I always get from them are pertinent. Like they're just kind of like a, it, honestly it's kind of like getting advice from an 80 some odd year old Italian guy. <laughs> like it's just, they're always just like straightforward and like, Here's your advice. I'm too old to beat around the bush, um, which is kind of nice about them. Um, so this is one of his latest decks. Uh, just came out where he is, um, you know, doing another Japanese style deck. It is Major Arcana only. And I, of course, got two versions. This one for collecting um, in, with one of his handmade boxes. Super beautiful work of art. And then this one will be for my everyday use. Um, and I have to, honestly, it's going to pair beautifully with, um, with my Hokusai deck, but anywho, if you are overseas and well, if you're not in Italy, obviously, um, you need to ask them to post the box in a sturdy cardboard box. International shipping is really hard on their packages. And unfortunately as a casualty of the shipping, I don't know if you guys can see, but my box got a little mushed. Um, my hand, the handmade box got a little mushed. There's a tear in the upper um, left hand corner of the box, which is really, really sad. Um, but it's not going to take away from my enjoyment. This, you know what? It's unique to me. Um, so this deck I probably won't use too, too often. And I was super excited to see when I got it. Um, it's the other thing about this, the, the handmade box, or at least this style. Um, they do tend to get a little stuck in there sometimes. Yeah, there's two cards in there right now. Um, come here, you. This is number six out of 250. That is the closest to a number one out of whatever edition that I have ever owned ever. So I'm really super excited about this particular deck. Um, and I probably will not use this very often at all. I'm just gonna, you know, like considering that it's already got a little bit of damage, um, I'm going to stick it on a shelf somewhere and, you know, kind of, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have to like, you know, my precious, like stare at it and, um, just never ever use it, but wish I could. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna keep this one nice in nice and mint condition for my collection. Um, maybe I'll bust it out on like super special occasions. Um, but thankfully, I knew that I was probably not gonna use the handmade box one and I or and I got this guy along with it. And it comes in the mass produced Il Menegolo box. It's got the logo all over it. It's a really nice sturdy chipboard. And then he's, he still puts his wax seal on every box, which is beautiful. And it's got um, the, the label gl hand glued on there. And this one is number, and so with every deck you get an information sheet um, printed in both English and Italian. Um, so this deck is done in the style of Udagawa Kuniyoshi, who was um, alive during 19, I'm sorry, 1797 and 1861. And he um, was famous for, again, woodblock printing and stuff. Uh, so very similar style to Hokusai. I would argue not as detailed, um, but no less beautiful. And of course you get the little paper in there that says handmade, so any variations are due to workmanship and not to be considered as defects. Um, <clears throat> and this one is number 19 out of 250, and I'm super excited about that. Um, but anyway, with no further ado, uh, the back of the, this is all, it's, it's um, a nice heavy duty art paper. Um, the back of the deck is just the plain, like it's a green, um, kind of sponged on color and it's like layered watercolory type of a look with of course his logo on the back and then card number one. Oh, the cards are large enough they're kind of like a large oracle size 
um, you know, large enough to fit in the hand, co not comfortably this way, but definitely comfortably this way. Um, and you want to shuffle these gently anyway. The paper does differ from my Hokusai Tarot in that it doesn't have that watercolor paper feel, um, but it is like a nice, kind of like a nice, sturdy, grainy art paper. Um, so without further ado, we will just go ahead and start. So we've got The Fool, which is absolutely like, I don't know, he's just so cute. Like, look at his little, little blankier bag right there. He's getting ready to go do some stuff. Um, and then we've got the Magician. And this is just so adorable. I think it just kind of captures the absolute feel of the Magician right here. And he kind of reminds me a little bit of the Minike Neko. Um, the cat with the one paw up that invites luck into the house. Um, luck, it actually, luck and money. And then you've got the um, High Priestess, which is arguably one of my favorite cards in this deck, followed by the Empress, and of course the Emperor. He's a little scary. Like I get that that's just supposed to be like spots around his eyes, but when like from further back, he's kind of scary looking. Um, and then you've got the Pope or the Hierophant. You've got the lovers, which is so cute. Oh my goodness, it's a crazy cat lady. You've got the chariot. This is an interesting one for the chariot. And actually when I first saw this, I kind of had, I almost mistook it for the Wheel of Fortune. Um, I don't know, like it's it's got some, like it's like, you know, like it's moving, like it's got some movement, but it definitely is a little abstract there. But you know, do you got the, You've got the title, so it's easy to recognize as the chariot. And then you've got Justice and the Hermit, another one of my favorite cards in this deck. He's got his little staff and a little scroll, and this almost looks like a moon back here, like he's getting ready to wander through and take that journey. And then this is the Wheel of Fortune. Um, super cute. I think he works this squiggle into a lot of his works. Um, I recognize it from a few other pieces. It shows up again. There's another card it shows up on and I'll point it out when we get there. Um, and then we've got Strength, the cat catching a fish. And we've got the, um, the, hanged, the hanged cat, as it were, or the hanged man. It looks like he's caught up on some yarn hanging from the ceiling there. And then we've got Death, which I think this is a beautiful, beautiful representation of, of death for whatever reason. I just really enjoy this card. Um, I don't know, just something about it. I like the white cat with the little pink bow. I also love that here death is quite possibly a girl. Um, you don't see very many female representations of death, even though death is supposed to be a non-gendered entity entity it always feels a little masculine to me whenever I see it it's like a very masculine like you know energy but I like how this one is like kind of like schmancy and and um what's the word I'm looking for graceful yep it's 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 a it's a it's a good death card I like it so we've got um you know temperance and the devil this is my favorite card in this whole entire deck. Um, <laughs> it's just so true. <laughs> like, like, it's just so good. Cats are the devil. Um, and then we've got the tower, which is a really, I love, this is another card that is represented really well, just with like the, without having the tower in it, you have all the elements of the tower card there. And you've got the star, the moon. I like how this, and the, the moon card I really enjoy. It, it's really hard to capture all the aspects of the moon um, card in any single piece of artwork. I think the only card that I've ever really seen come close to it is the moon card from the zombie tarot. Um, but this one captures almost like the dreamlike, surreal, like, serene peaceful quality of the moon card um you know clearly it's somebody sleeping there and he's having a dream so and you've got the sun i like how this cat is looking away from us and towards the sun it's almost like you know riding off into the sunset kind of a feel and you've got te um not temperance um judgment 
I don't know why I said temperance there for a second. Um, probably because of it's so watery and it almost has like that flowy, like kind of a feel that the temperance card usually has. Um, but this is the, the, the judgment card, um, also known as the angel, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I would have to, I would have to meditate on how that one really captures just, uh, judgment and then the world. So we've got the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, and we've got a cat that just looks super happy. And of course you do have that circular kind of a feeling um, from it. But again, I, I think that this one is probably a little sparsely representative of the world, but it's still, it's, it's, it's a great little card and you know, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna not love an, an El Menegello card. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's it. Like I said, it's just, it's just a major arcana deck. Um, these kinds of decks are good for like draw of the week, card of the week, card of the day. Um, although I find that the major arcana cards tend to focus on really heavy issues. So if I was, if, if, in my practice, I only do like one major arcana draw once a week. Like it's all you need. Overarching theme for the week, we're good. Also, um, I don't know that I would use just would I do a wheel of the year with a, no, I would not do a wheel of the year with a major arcana only deck, unless I had like several and combine them. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't. All right. So let's go ahead and do our draw. So if I were you, um, if you have this deck shuffle gently, the corners are not rounded. So you, you have to kind of do what you can to keep from smushing the corners. And I know that there are some people out there, uh, nobody here, for example, Oh, and she's also had issues with the international shipping as well. I think she got a copy of Hokusai that was kind of smushed in a little bit. So um, if you do decide to pull the trigger and get an Il Menigello deck, definitely ask, like, just insist on having a sturdy cardboard box to ship in. Pay the extra postage. It's totally worth it. Um, all right, so let's see what we get here. But yes, shuffle gently. Definitely shuffle gently because um, you don't want to smush the corners of the cards. And I don't think I'd ever round out an Il, an Il Menigello deck only because they are so collectible. Like, I don't, I don't know. Not that I see myself selling them anytime soon, but I think I would just feel really bad about rounding the corners on a deck like this. All right, so let's choose our card for the evening. And we got... <laughs> we got Judgment. All right, so... <clears throat> what an appropriate card to get during a time of year where Santa Claus is watching you like a hawk, like a creepy stalkery hawk he's watching. Um, but <laughs> no, but really, um, where we're nearing the end of the year, um, I always like to look at the year's end as a chance to, like, I know it's super cliche to be like resolution time. Like if you want to like, just putting like a fine enough point on the end of your year is kind of a really nice thing to do. I, I like when things like, you know, it's like closing a chapter and starting a new one and deciding whether or not you want to stay on the same path that you're on or start something new, or if there's something about yourself that you want to change or something about your situation that you want to change, you absolutely 100% can. But I also like this card for the holiday season. If you choose to celebrate a holiday this time of year, um, I really like this card for the holiday season because it reminds us it's not all about the material things. Um, it's, it's about our good deeds. It's about, and, and it's not about just doing it this time of year too. It, it, it's about like, if you were to look at your entire year, how would you judge you? Um, you know, like it is the giving spirit this time of year. Are you doing it, you know, for obligation? Are you doing it? Like, is this something, is it something that you practice year round? Like it's kind of, it's a good time to kind of examine, um, you know, your, like just how you treat people year round, I think, instead of like, okay, it's nice to be nice to people during the holiday season, but it's even nicer to be nice to people year round and to give when you can and do what you can. Um, so this is a wonderful card to get this time of year, I think. Um, so yeah, that, that kind of wraps it up for my little tiny Il Menigello video, um, almost under 15 minutes. I'm super proud of us. So yeah, it's a beautiful deck, highly recommend it. Um, like if you're a tarot collector, you need at least one um, Il Menigello deck in your collection anyway. So 
If you have any questions, put them in the doobly and I will put a link to um, the Maestro's Facebook because that's the easiest way to order. I'll put a link to that in the description box below and I will see you guys later, Tarot Sphere. I'm going to try and do a live video soon so that way I can do some live readings. It is time to do live readings. Bye guys.